So today we're learning about fluid power technology. And this is just a general agenda of what we're going to be going through today. Um, I'm hopeful that we make it through these activities because I think the most fun parts of the um, learning today are actually getting to build um, your devices that you'll be using. So um, just a tip for you is an engineering notebook or portfolio may be helpful. Um, and we'll talk about that in a minute. We're gonna talk about why fluid power um, and go into different types of fluid power. We're gonna talk about Pascal's law um, and investigate different um, levers and fluid power machines and then go through the construction activities. So lots to do. And um, I didn't put any breaks here into the schedule because I didn't know how things would flow. So if, if there comes time where you need a break, just say so and we can stop. So your engineering notebook, I'm sure you've been told that having an engineering notebook um, is very helpful. You can have um, engineering paper that's just gridded paper or, or an actual notebook. But um, for your participation today, it may be helpful to write down the activity name and the notes, um, some notes that you can take about the activities. When we talk about Pascal's law, there will be some equations that you might wanna write down. You can um, answer, question, answer questions or um, write conclusion questions or statements about the activity. And then this is where you'll keep sketches um, that are neat labeled and a description of the sketch. That way you can refer to them again. And I see you getting some paper. That's very helpful, good deal. All right, so why fluid power? Why is it important? Should we answer? Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know. Like, I'll just like an example of using a lot of stuff, I think, like um, like bridges and stuff that need to, I don't know, get more room for the, like size or whatever. I don't know, something like that. Yeah, so fluid power, I mean, you're on the right track. Fluid power um, just gives simple machines the ability to do a lot of work. So whether with hydraulics or pneumatics, um, simple arms can, can lift a lot of things or push a lot of things, um, but they can perform a lot of power um, with just a little bit of um, air or um, fluid. So you're on, you're definitely on the right track. And they're important because you see them in your everyday lives. I'm a farmer, I guess you could say. Um, we have tractors, backhoes, anything that has hydraulic cylinders, um, implements that, that uses hydraulics to go up and down, um, fold, just a lot of power to those tools. So can you think of other ways, and we'll investigate this um, a, a little bit later, but what are some things in the room right now that you see could be potential fluid power? How about on the door? Is there a door stop or like a, an arm that opens the door or shuts the door? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's definitely an example of, of fluid power. Um, there's a, a mechanical device in there that's helping that arm work. So it's, it's around you all over. Um, and we'll talk about that some more. So I'm just going to show you this video. This is from the National Fluid Power Association. And I think it does a really good job of explaining fluid power. And I need to stop sharing for a minute and reshare. Sorry. I need to make sure the sound is going to come through like I want it to. Okay, here we go. Fluid power is everywhere. Fluid power is not new technology. Uh, fluid power has been around for a while. Majority of people have no idea what fluid power is influencing. The limits for fluid power are still 
not defined. There's no other technology that even comes close in terms of power density. For a mechanical engineer, fluid power is a great place to be. The things that were possible just a few years ago are now possible. It's energy storage. It's like a really powerful muscle. If you just step outside and take a look, you're pretty sure that everything you see out there has had some fluid power applied to it. And on top of that, the cherry on the cake is digitization of hydraulics. That is the unexpected. You get kind of this sort of visceral thrill of feeling when you get to see this really big arm. <laughs> So what do you guys think? Pretty important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did they show you some things that you probably didn't think about? Yeah. 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 Awesome. Well, I lost the ability to see you, but that's okay. Um, so let's talk about types of fluid power. Hydraulics obviously take some kind of fluid to um, perform the work. Hydraulic fluid power systems, they transfer energy through liquids. Um, typically this is oil. So some examples include a mining conveyor, backhoes, other heavy duty construction equipment. Um, but you also saw um, some other things in the video that might have liquid power systems. Um, what do you think on a car has a liquid power system? Steering. Steering. How about how about something else? Brakes. Yes, absolutely. There's a, a lot of power um, behind the, the force of the brakes coming from that fluid. So and the, the fluid lines are very small, but they're performing a lot of work because they're stopping a very heavy car. So that's a great example. How about um, pneumatic fluid power? So this is through gas. And I showed a picture here of like an air chuck, um, but there's there's power behind that air. So this could include paint stirring, um, plastic um, component production. Can you think of any others? This one is tough for me <laughs> because I only came up with an air chuck. And basically this tool, um, helps put tires back on the rims, um, big tires, uh, very easily, or back on the bead, I guess. Okay, so how about we do a fluid power in investigation? So this will require you to get two 20 milliliter syringes and two 10 milliliter syringes. And I'm going to share my desk. Maybe. And you'll need um, just, you can use both pieces of tubing or um, if you have a really long piece of tubing, then you can um, cut it into thirds. Can you see my desk? Yeah. yeah. All right. So with this investigation activity, you're also going to pull out um, right here that says investigating pneumatic and hydraulic systems. No, wait, what? What is it? What is it called again? It's called Investigating Pneumatic and Hydraulic Systems. There's an activity one and then an activity two. Yeah. Um... How about I pull it up on my screen? I don't want to share this. Okay, yeah. I'm not sure if we have it. Or it probably is somewhere. No worries, we will pull it up right here. Okay, so this one um, 
This one has you connect two syringes of the same size to both ends of the tubing. Um, and like I said, if you have a really long piece of tubing, you can cut it into thirds or cut it in half um, if, if one of you just wants to do the activity right now. And I promised Pandora I would um, send some more tubing. I didn't have as much as I thought when I put the kits together. So you will be getting some more tubing because this tubing that we're using today, we're gonna have to use it um, for multiple activities. So if you can see my screen, um, connect two syringes of the same size to both end of, ends of the tubing and make sure the plunger of one syringe is out and the plunger of the other syringe is in before connecting the tubing. Okay. So push the plunger in and tell me what happens. You know, when it's out, I'm sorry. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Okay. And so then just just keep doing that. Push the plunger in of the second syringe, and then we get into the I think it's just, I think it's the straw too big. So. Yeah, I'm not sure the seal's quite good enough. Sir, that looks like it might fit a little bit. Better. That one might be too long. Yeah, hold on. Give us a second. Yeah, oh, you're fine. Take all the time you need. And just. So when you um, when you pull the syringe out and push them back in. Okay. What? So what do you? Why do you think this is happening? Yeah, we did. Yeah. We did. Because um, there's only so much space for the air to go, so it forces it. Right, right. So it forces it out, forces it out the other syringe. So try pushing in the syringes um, at the same time. What's happening now? So I'm trying to, I'm pushing in both syringes. Yeah, we're just like pushing against each other. Yeah, and then they pop back out kind of, don't they? Yeah, how they go. Yeah, yeah it compresses a little bit then. You're right, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so now disconnect one syringe from the tubing and press, press it in completely. So the one that's out, disconnect it and press it in. Okay. Mine are pretty tight, so that's hard to do. And then try pulling one plunger out and let go. So now that they're both in, try pulling one out and let go. Okay. Okay. Wait, should be pushed in? Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Is it just pulling it back in? That's what's happening to mine. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So why do you think this is happening? Like the reverse. Yeah. 
And it doesn't really work, does it? <laughs> so what do you think uh, would happen? So just say like, or do any of you um, operate any farm equipment? Cause that's the best example I can give. Yeah. yeah. So what do you think would happen if these cylinders op operated in reverse? Like on your implements? Uh, it wouldn't go well. <laughs> it wouldn't, they wouldn't work at all because they're trying to force, um, force pressure out in order to um, perform the work. They don't, the, the tool can't like pull itself out of the cylinder. It has to be pushed out of the cylinder. So that's what this is trying to, to show you that there has to be some kind of pressure um, pushing, pushing something out or, or performing the work. So now try um, two different size syringes. So I'm gonna hook up the 20 milliliter syringe and don't forget to, um, to pull this one of the syringes out. So for mine, I just pulled um, the 20 milliliter syringe all the way out. Okay. What are you noticing when you push it in? like just like goes in halfway instead of or I'll push it all the way and then like push back itself halfway yeah you're right so the 10 uh milliliter syringe only has half the capacity that the 20 does but when I push the 20 all the way in there's way too much force and it actually popped my syringe out of it so or my plunger out of the syringe so um that's just a fun example you can practice with it to talk to youth about how fluid power works with different sizes. Um, and then I see you have a shorter tube than I do, maybe a shorter tube versus a longer tube and see how that works as well. I think they'll probably work the same because obviously the same amount of pressure is going through the, the tubing, but with the longer tubing, obviously maybe the 20 milliliter syringe fills the tube um, with air as well. And so you can push it all the way down. Just something to investigate and have fun playing with. Um, I don't know if you would like to try this with water um, and actually fill it full of fluid and see how that works. What do you guys think? Do you have some water in there? We get some, yeah. We get some. yeah. Do you want to try it? Sure. Your training. So if you want to play around, I'm willing to just watch. Okay. Yeah, so you'll just fill up your syringes with water or just fill one syringe with water and just investigate what happens um, and connect it to your tubing. And to investigate it further, you could also try to fill up your tubing as well with water um, using the syringe and that way your, your system is full of fluid. Because in real life, if the hydraulic fluid system wasn't completely full, you'd have air pockets, and you may find that. Um, yep, and bubbles and stuff. It won't work. Well, kind of. Well, I mean, it's just water, but. Yeah, it should have Okay, yeah. Okay, cool. I mean, it basically works the same almost. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Um, what do you think would be a better fluid power system, hydraulics or pneumatics? Probably pneumatic, because didn't you say the bubbles would cause problems, but there's not really bubbles of air that would go against air? Um, so that's a really good point. 
um, if your hydraulic su system has air in it, then obviously it won't be as effective. But typically hydraulic systems work better because the fluid, the, the fluid actually fills up your system um, and allows, it allows your tool or whatever you're using to actually stay, um, stay put as long as there's no um, leaks in the lines or anything like that. So hydraulics, some kind of fluid system um, is actually better than air systems. Is that says like fluids are like harder to compress than like air, I guess? So like, mm -hmm. I kind of like compress that down as much as like air. Right. And then it doesn't really, does it pop back out if you're trying to compress it down? Uh, I think we both touched. Oh, okay. That feels kind of different. It's not like going back. I think the laptop's done up. What's that? Sorry, I didn't hear you very well. No, we, we might just we might just be switching devices for a second. Oh, okay, no problem. Yeah. You're fine. Keep going. Whatever you do. Okay, so um, <laughs> you guys, you can just play around with those and um, teach yourselves a little bit more about that. But if I did not send that, I apologize. I will send this um, investigating pneumatic and hydraulic systems activity to you, um, to Pandora, so she can get it to your coaches, so you'll have it. So I apologize. All right, let's go to the next activity. Do you have any um, random objects in the room? We're gonna go to um, this task card that says holding power. Yeah, so there's laminated task cards in the kit, and you're gonna wanna pull the one out that says holding power. So with this activity, we're going to investigate. Um, go ahead. All right. So we're going to investigate how fluid power can hold things in place, um, even when they're turned off. So find an object in the room. Uh, various weights are fine. Um, and you'll need a partner with a stopwatch. So a, a stopwatch on your phone will work OK. So you can use you can use a book, um, a rock, <laughs> a water bottle, anything you want to use. Um, a water bottle here. Like okay, a water bottle. Yeah. So, um, your partner's going to get a stopwatch, and what what your other partner is going to do is you're going to hold your arm straight out with that item and see how long you can hold it before your arm starts getting tired. Like how long until I get tired or? Yeah, how long until you don't feel, or you feel like you can't hold that anymore, like at the height that you're holding it? it takes something heavier. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> and if we, if we get more than three minutes, we'll stop. I mean, that, that might be a challenge. I feel like I can go longer, it might just start to get tired. So I mean, like two minutes, I'll be good. And while you're doing that, I think of an example. Um, so like we were remodeling our house over the summer and we had to put a new beam, um, a header up above a doorway or a, a, yeah, the doorway. And so obviously I thought I could hold it for a long time before um, I could let go and I couldn't. I couldn't hold it long enough to even get it put in place because it was so heavy. It was two um, like laminated two by tens. So um, it was pretty heavy. Um, so then we had to actually use like a lever or a, another piece of wood to hold it up. So I just think about that. Fluid power does a lot of work um, and levers do a lot of work. So 
we kind of take that for granted. I will say it's fun. Like, I'll, I'll think it's elbow, so it's kind of hurting a little bit, but it's whatever. <laughs> Are we almost to two minutes or are we over two minutes? We're about 20 seconds from two minutes. Okay. I mean, it's definitely like getting kind of harder to do. So. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. If it was heavier, you... I think I would definitely be done by now. <laughs> if you want to take your arm down, that's fine. Let's talk about it. So, um, how do you think? Um, how do you think, I guess I'm, I'm trying to relate this to um, when we're talking about systems being turned off and still holding things up, why is fluid power important? I mean, did you say earlier that like, or I guess it was in the video, they said like it has memory kind of, or like, they like hold its shape, hold where it's at. Yeah, over an amount of time, as long as there are no leaks in the lines, um, it can hold anything up for a long time. Um, I think about like airbags on um, a semi. If there's a leak in the airbag, obviously, good job, you did a great job. <laughs> um, yeah. if, if there's leaks, obviously the, the brakes are gonna deflate or the airbags are gonna deflate and the truck will not have any air in it anymore. So um, as long as everything is in good condition, fluid power can hold things up, can, can hold its shape. Um, and even like a backhoe, if you're trying to, to carry something or lift something up for a long amount of time, as long as it's working properly, the bucket or whatever should not um, go down. So if you can think of other examples that aren't farm related, I would love to hear them because you're probably going to get tired of hearing farm related examples from me. <laughs> Does anyone want to try? Anyone else want to try the um, the lifting the object and holding it in place? Because this is an example that you can do with too to talk about um, how fluid power works. If you want them to see like how actually how much power um, it takes to hold up an object, how. Um, on this card at the bottom is a good question that you can ask the kids when you're teaching them this um, topic. Can you estimate the size of a fluid power system, the cylinder, how much pressure to hold up the object you had? And you don't have to have the answer right now, but it's just something to think about. And when we talk about Pascal's law, this may be a little bit easier for you. So you know how to roll a duct tape? Is that what that was? About how many pounds do you think it was? Yeah, one and a half to two. Okay, okay. So well, when we get down to Pascal's law, then we'll just talk about that and see how much um, like how big of a system it would take. All right, I'm gonna share my screen again. I guess I did have the, the card up here on the screen. Sorry, I didn't share that. Um, next, let's go to the principles activity. So fluid power principles. And that one looks like. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So let's talk about it. Pascal's law, and this is important to remember an increase in pressure at any point in a confined, incompressible fluid. Basically, the same pressure is going to be everywhere within that system. Okay. So an increase in pressure just means that the pressure is going to be the same everywhere. Buoyancy. And you already probably all know this, but um, buoyancy, an object in a fluid either partially or fully submerged is buoyant up by the equal force of the weight of the fluid it displaces. And then viscosity, a measure of a fluid's resistance to flow. So let's talk about these scenarios. Honey is more difficult to pour than water. Is it Pascal's law, buoyancy, or viscosity? 
viscosity. Yeah, absolutely. A submarine can sink or float de depending on how much ballast it has. Buoyancy. Yes. A metal cylinder is filled with propane and used with a barbecue. Yeah. That goes well. Yes, yes. A small force applied to a brake pedal can stop a car. That goes well again. Yeah, yeah. Water flows through a pipe up and over the lip of a reservoir and down into the town's water main. And there's a couple you could choose here. Yes. Um, I mean, viscosity because it's flowing. Probably uh -huh. one. Yep. And then which one? Well, it's got nothing to do with buoyancy. It's probably Pascal's law. Yeah, because obviously the water is is flowing the same force up and over um, a reservoir and down. So on viscosity. And then blood is able to flow through your vessels. Viscosity again? Yeah. And what do you think about it being also Pascal's law? Um, yeah, probably. Yeah, because your um, circulatory system is closed. So it has the same force throughout or pressure. So a hot air balloon rises as the air inside the balloon is heated. Um, buoyancy? Yep. The dash pot in a hydraulic door closer shows the closing of a door to, slows the closing of a door to prevent it from slamming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also Pascal's law because the hydraulics rely on that. And then the last one, a pneumatic nail gun can propel nails up to 420 meters per second. Pascal's law. Yeah, you guys are great. So this is just kind of a, fl a fun um, thing that you can talk about with youth to talk about those three um, terms and then just give them some examples. Some of these are kind of tricky, so if you can come up with other examples to do that, um, that would be fine. And I'm just thinking of all different kinds of options for you to um, talk about fluid power with your kids, just in case you can't do um, a lot of things hands-on right now. All right, so um, let's see. Do you need a break or do you wanna keep going? Thank you, Okay. All right, so now the fun part and kind of tricky. Um, Pascal's law. So you learned a lot about Pascal's law in the last activity. Um, pressure in, in a confined body of fluid acts equally in all directions at the right, at right angles um, to, to the containing surfaces. So that's a long way to say that obviously the pressure is equal everywhere. This pressure is equal to the force divided by the area. So this is where you may wanna make some notes in your notebook. And if you're ready, I have some, some more equations to have you write down. Um, and this is all assuming that the fluid is at rest, so it's not, um, it's not currently flowing and there's negligible gravitational force. So nothing is um, pulling uh, pushing against it or pulling it. So the first one, area, the area one is divided by area two, which is also equal to the distance moved two over distance moved one. So in this example that I have drawn, area one is um, the square footage of the cylinder on the left, and area two is the square footage of the cylinder on the right, and square footage is important um, in this example. And then distance moved would be um, D2 is one inch on the right. You can see it, um, this is the, the height of the cylinder, 
and D1 is 10 inches, the height of the cylinder on the left. Now it's not drawn to scale, but um, the example is there for you to see. Are you ready for the next um, equation? Yeah. Okay, mechanical advantage is equal to D1 divided by D2 or A2 divided by A1. And you can also say it's the output force divided by the input force. All right, let me know when you're ready. All right, the output force is equal to F2, and F2 is basically um, the amount of weight that is lifted um, in cylinder two, or it's F1, which is the input force times a2 divided by A1. And then input force is equal to output force divided by mechanical advantage. And then as always, area equals pi r squared. So if you have an example where um, the area is just, is not in square inches, then, um, then you'll need this, or it's just they show the radius, et cetera. So all of these, um, all of these equations are going to be important in the next activity where we're going to do some math. So in this example, F1 is 100 pounds. So the input force is 100 pounds. Um, I'm giving you all of the information here that you would need. Um, D1, it's going down 10 inches. It's pushing up one inch. But the input force um, has an output force of 1,000 pounds because the input force is multiplied by um, the area of the second one, of the second cylinder. So this may also be a good um, drawing to sketch up in your notebook as well and label all of the parts of this um, drawing, just so you can refer back to it. So once you do that, let me know. Okay. All right, we're gonna move on. So we have um, a few questions here we're gonna answer. So the first one, we're going to figure out the mechanical advantage of a hydraulic car lift, similar to the one that we just showed you on the previous slide. A1 equals two square inches and A2 equals 20 square inches and the applied force or the input force is 100 pounds. So what is the mechanical advantage? Say 100 pounds? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what units that be, but 10. Yeah, but 10, you're right. That is correct, good job. Okay, so what does Pascal's principle state? 
And here are some um, answers you can choose from. Any object wholly or partially immersed in a fluid is buoyed up by a force equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the object. B, any change in pressure applied at any given point of the fluid is transmitted with a decreasing value throughout the fluid. C, for a fluid with zero viscosity, an increase in the speed of the fluid occurs simultaneously with a decrease in pressure or a decrease in the fluid's potential energy. Or D, any change in pressure applied at any given point of the fluid is transmitted undiminished throughout the fluid. Awesome. Okay, the next one. A hydraulic press has an input cylinder one inch in diameter and an output cylinder six inches in diameter. Assuming 100% efficiency, find the force exerted by the output piston when a force of 10 pounds is applied to the input piston. What's that? 60? No, it is not 60. Wait, hold on. Six. Wait, what is this? Is it six? It's not. Wait, what are you looking for? The, no. um, the force. How six. many pounds is it? Um, what's the output force? Um, well, I don't know. It was... Uh, Oh, Diane. Hold on. We have to do the power squared. So I, I hear you doing that math, and I, uh, I kind of messed this up a little bit. Um, you want to square square the one inch and the six inches. I should have. Um, I, I I know I said diameter. So sorry about that. Will you just do one inch squared and six inches squared then? Six is the radius. Um. Or? Yeah. No. It should just be six inches squared. Or not, oh, yeah. it's not six inches squared. You need to square the six inches. Yeah, yeah. I guess, I guess I need to rewrite my question. <laughs> yeah. What's that? Is it 360 pounds? Yeah, you're right. You're right. Sorry, that was definitely... Um, yeah. But every time I would do the math, I would come out with 60 pounds. And I'm like, that's not right. It's actually 360 because you're, um, you have to have square footage on your area, um, the area of the piston. So the next two, I promise you won't have trouble. What's the mechanical advantage of a lever that can lift a 500 pound, pound weight using a load of 20 pounds? So, 25. 25? Yeah, you're right. Good job. And then how much weight will be needed um, to be applied to a hydraulic system that has a mechanical advantage of 20 to lift a 1,000 pound load? Fifty. Good job. You guys are rock stars. Thanks for getting through that with me. Um, just a lot of practice of Pascal's law because Pascal's law is important. Um, and when we go, or when we are thinking about that, um, two ish pound thing of duct tape, you could put that in here, um, and try to figure out like how, how big of a system, how much force input force it would take to lift that. So, um, basically like measuring it and, um, and weighing it, you could figure that out. So Pascal's law is what you would use to, to figure out how much um, 
force it's, it takes to lift an object or how big of a system. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about simple machines. Um, and this machine, or this is about basically um, levers. So let's see here. I'm gonna share. Um, you, you see simple machines on this worksheet, but also there are three classes of levers. Um, and this is where I'm gonna have you use the fluid power detective um, card that has you um, look throughout the room and find different objects that um, are simple machines. So simple machines, um, let's start with the wedge. There's a wheel and axle, a lever, an inclined plane, a screw, and a pulley. Can you find something in the room that has um, each one of those machines? And just take some time, five to 10 minutes to um, investigate the room and see what you can find. You might need to open some cabinets and things too. Do we want an example of each or just one example that has all of those? An example of each, if you can find them. There's a bag of lovers. Okay. <laughs> there we go. I was like, oh, this works. And I was like, wait, everything can start. And the things you find, keep them out because they may fit into a class of levers. That's there. And actually look around the room and see if you can find anything else. Because so it's not so easy. Like a screw, like an inclined plane. Knife has to be something, right? Probably. <laughs> You're the wrong person. Yeah, no. So does a knife count? Um, it could, yeah. It's like I don't know. You like you put a lot of pressure on like a small point, right? That's like something. Sure. Keep that out because it's definitely a class of a lever. Okay. Actually, the knife is a lever, so you have one marked off. We already had a bunch of levers, so. Um, yeah, those are easy to find. I'm thinking of a screw that is yeah. the cabinet to the or the door to the cabinet with the um, with the bracket because yeah, yeah. It's holding things together or it lifts an object. It's actually doing both. It's holding the door to the cabinet and it's lifting it up. Yeah, we got a bunch of those right Yeah. <laughs> So what do you, what was in the bag? Um, it was like a hammer, tongs, stapler. Excellent, excellent. Those will be good for the next example. Yeah, you're right. Okay, well, let's move on to the levers. Um, I'm going to share my screen. So, lever classes. Lever one, or class one is basically like a teeter totter. The fulcrum's in the middle, you apply a force at one end, and um, the load is forced out at the other end. Yeah. And this is something you might want to draw in your um, engineering notebook. A class two lever, the fulcrum is at the beginning and 
um, you push the force in at the opposite end and the force out, the load um, is forced down in the middle. And then class three levers, um, a fulcrum is at, is at one end, the force out is at the opposite end and the force in is in the middle. Okay, so let's talk about some of the things that you found. They do. The out and the in is opposite, though. Okay, what did you say before that? For which one? Uh, so how about the things that you found um, throughout the room? Let's talk about the the load or the I guess the type of lever that they are. So I saw a stapler maybe. Oh, the tongs. Great example. Okay. Chris, where's the fulcrum? Here. Yes. And then is your force in the middle? Your force in, is it is your effort in the middle or on the end? I mean, I guess it could be oh, I guess in the middle, yeah. Okay. And so the the load is actually on the opposite end. So what class of lever is that? Second. I don't know if I got the order right though. Oh, Probably no third, third. the third. Yeah, it's a class three lever. So you may write that down um, under class three levers, some tongs. And that way, when you're talking about um, types of levers with your students, maybe having these examples will be helpful. So how about, did I see a stapler? Yeah. Yeah, the stapler would probably be the same way. It would be a class three. Let's talk about your knife. Can you, um, I guess, demonstrate using your knife at like you were cutting cake? <laughs> Where's your fulcrum in that? And it doesn't have to be on the knife. In the middle? It's where your hands are. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. So your fulcrum's on the end, and then where's your load and your effort? Effort in the middle, load on the other end. Wait. Um, yeah. yeah, so in I initially, your effort could be in the middle um, because you're pushing down in the middle and your, your load could be on the end. Is that what you just said? Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. like a, it's like a class three as well. Yeah, class three. Did you find any scissors or pliers? Yeah, we have scissors. Okay, that's an easy class one lever because obviously your fulcrum's in the middle. Think about a class two lever. What could you, what could you class two lever? Where your load is in the middle and your effort is on the other end. And you may not have an example of this. Go ahead, sorry. I said a door. Tell me how. I don't know if the load's really in the middle, but like you have like the, like the brackets on the one side and the handle on the other side, and you open it and like the whole thing. Yeah, that's a great example because the load could be the weight of the door. Um, or the force that you have to push the weight of the door. Um, also, I think about a nutcracker because the fulcrum's on one end and you have to squeeze it on the other end to break the nut in the middle. 
And that's probably a really old example because I don't know of anyone that has a nutcracker anymore, but um, that's a good example. But just some things to think about, like things all around you that could be a lever, um, like a hole punch. I don't know if you can see me because my thing yeah. is. We have one of those too. Kind of What's now. that? Um, we have one. Yeah, we have one too. Oh yeah, the crocodile. Yes, absolutely. That's that's a good one. Um, I don't really see anything else on my desk that could be one. All right, but you get the idea. Um, this is also another easy discussion activity that you could do with youth because they could get up and up around the room or wherever and, and try to find things in the room that could be a lever. Um, so how do, how do levers relate to fluid power? They provide mechanical advantage the same yeah absolutely um just basically the mechanical advantage makes the task easier and um hydraulic power fluid power can can use those levers um to do the work okay you know this is actually good because i was hoping that we would get to spend a majority of our time um in construction because obviously I didn't send you any cut materials, so you'll be cutting. Um, and then also, did I send dowel rods? Do you have wood sticks and dowel rods? Okay, I was looking at my supplies today and I was worried that um, you didn't have them. So let's go ahead and um, if you need a break, now would be a good time for a break. And to get your supplies ready to um, to start building the elevator shaft. Okay. So we're gonna. I'm gonna uh, let you know that two of the kids have to leave early. One has a science Olympiad tournament. The other one has a track meet. Okay. Just to what let time? you know. So John has to leave at 11:20. Yeah. Okay. So if you need to leave, yours is at noon. Yeah. And his is at noon. So Spence okay. has to. Just after 11.30. So I'm just going to let you know that I'll be here to assist if needed. But okay. I just want to let you know ahead of time that I apologize that some of the kids have to leave. Oh, but they were you're fine. That's okay. that's totally fine. I appreciate knowing that. So I'm going to change gears a little bit. And would you prepare your supplies to build the lifter? Because this is way more fun than the elevator shaft. And you can build the elevator shaft at any time. Um, Do we need a ruler or like a tape measure? Yeah, a ruler would be good. A 12 inch ruler is fine. Um, and I don't think I sent extra glue sticks. So you have a hot glue gun. Um, basically, I have a lifter kit that has everything cut in it, but you're going to need to spend a little bit more time cutting. Um, one person can start gluing, so you can plug your hot glue gun in. Um, you'll need. I believe you'll need a drill. I'm gonna, um, and then there's step-by-step -step instructions that should have been printed for you as well. Yeah, we So the, the supplies or what you'll need um, in the instruction booklet, you can pull these contents out of the supplies that I sent. Um, 
one of your syringes, someone will have to drill um, a hole in the plunger, but at, you will, um, you'll figure out where that goes when you get through the um, instructions. Or I could actually show you um, if you can see the hole is in this part of one of the syringes. Can you see that okay? Yeah, yeah. I think this is one of the most fun activities and this is not something that you'll build each time with the youth, but you will um, you'll use it to demonstrate the work that fluid power can do. Because with this lifter, you can actually put a load on it and lift it up um, and show just how you can show levers with it because it's a class of a lever as well. Okay, I mean, I think we got. You have everything? Oh, uh, should we start cutting stuff or? Yeah, yeah, go right ahead and start. Okay. And yeah. this will just be a workshop for you to do. And then if you have questions while you're working, you can just ask questions. And I'm gonna build it with you, but mine are all cut, so. Okay, yeah, everything's serious, okay. And then you'll see in your kit, you have white gussets with holes in them. And you also have green gussets. And the green gussets, these pieces, you don't need all of them, um, but they add strength to your design. Um, I guess I forgot to mention to you, um, I sent, there's something that there's, um, I guess a, a vice that hooks that wood piece to the table and that you can use to make straight cuts. There's a, yeah, blue, um, I guess, vice that you can, yeah, there you go. Yeah, we see it. 
And then also when you cut your angles, if you need to, those angles would be perfect angles as well. And I'm glad to see you wearing glasses when you're cutting. As you're working, um, I'm, I don't need to reiterate these, but as always, safety is number one. Um, so just think about the things you're doing uh, before you're doing them. And then um, have a plan for your construction. So if you need to look ahead through the instructions to see how things are laid out, um, you can do that. Um, measure twice, cut once. And then uh, accuracy, accuracy is important because if you're um, objects aren't, or if the pieces that you're putting together aren't flat, or if they have some kind of angle or, or they're not square, I guess I should say, um, then your lifter won't quite um, sit flat on the table. And then, so, so feel free to just continue working on the lifter. But um, since you have to leave, is it, it's John, um, you have a feedback, uh, evaluation, there's a QR code you can scan with your phone, or there's a link that you can go to about the training that you got today. I know you didn't get to sit on a, in on a lot of it, but all three of you will have filled this out. Okay, you may go ahead and scan that. Yeah, if, if you don't mind, that would be awesome. Yeah, I got it. Am I sharing my, yeah, I am, okay. Yeah, you are. Okay. be a syringe holder? Um, it, it's white and if you don't have one, I apologize. Um, you can get through the activity without it. Let me sh do a new share here. It looks like this. Oh, okay. Those are gray. So it's a- Oh, that's okay.
Do you have any sandpaper? Sand do you have any sandpaper? I do. If I run another building, I'll be back. Take it over. Oh, sorry. You're right. Go. How many mini washers are required? Um, let's see. Because it says eight, but we only have five. Oh, well, you can use, I'm, I think you'll be fine. Okay. Um, they'll just keep your dowel rods, dowel rod in place. Um, so it doesn't slide out.
I got the two, two one and a half ones and the four uh, eight inch ones. I'm going to do the one inch one. Okay. There's some like weird, weird things like stirring sticks, but I don't know which sticks they would pull. Yeah, these are stirring sticks too. Do you have, yeah, I hear you talking about stirring sticks. Do you have small ones that look like this? Yeah, but there's just different sizes, so I didn't want to like put them in the pile of stuff we already have if I put the wrong sticks in. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. What are the actual holders? Because we don't have more than 10 of anything and it has 16 written down. Um, Axle holders. Oh, there are these white things. Oh, okay. Do you have plenty of those? So I think they're done cutting everything. Okay. Okay. So, um, and you've probably organized them by sizes. I went ahead and started um, gluing. Um, so you've probably organized them by sizes. Like I said, you have your three and, or you have, I don't remember how long these are. Your eight inch pieces, you have four eight inch pieces, you have three and five eighths pieces, your three and a quarter pieces. Um, did you cut some uh, full four inch pieces? Yeah, there's four inch pieces. These four inch pieces here? Yes, okay. So
so um, my kit did not have everything cut like it was supposed to. So I've done some cutting too. Um, but I've gone ahead through the instructions and started putting my pieces together. So um, you'll see this is the assembly page for, um, for slides five through eight. And just start by, um, I would just start after that where it shows this, where you put these pieces together. So you'll have a, a quarter piece and a three and a quarter piece, um, then a four inch and a three and five eighths inch piece. I would just start going through it, um, just like the instructions show. And do you have all the pieces that you need So John's getting ready to leave. Yeah. He takes his binder with him, correct? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And I'll send, I'll send more things to Pandora to put in that binder after today, including the PowerPoint slides, as well as um, I'll email her a recording of this video so you can watch after today. But thanks for joining us. Have a great time. You too. Thank you. Thank you. So Spencer has another um, I think, I think I'm gonna... 10 minutes or so, or 15. Okay, so, okay. I think I can stay a little bit longer. You can stay a bit longer? Yeah. The way the Science Olympiad works, though, is there's different groups that do different things at different times, so he may okay. be able to buy a little more time. Oh, good. Okay, well, thank you. Yeah, if you just want to start putting this together, we'll be done as much as we can. Okay, so you can start putting it together. One, two, three, four. Yeah, that's these. Do you want to go ahead and fill out the evaluation, Spencer? Um, yeah, do I need to scan that? You can, um, or you can go to this link, but um, I can also have you fill it out later if you want. You can do it later. Okay. Um, yeah, here, let me take a, can I take a picture oh, of that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay. All right, cool. Yeah, I'll probably do it later. No problem. Excuse me. Thank you.
Spencer, what's your science Olympiad activity? Um, I'm doing a few things. I got a, I'm in protein modeling, um, experimental design, and the right to do it. Um, what are you doing for experimental design? Um, I don't know. That's. Oh, you don't? They're, they're giving you a task? They give us something that we have to do, and like the materials, and we have to like design experiment that like follows the scientific method and like is all like foolproof like according to all these guidelines or whatever so awesome. then, we have to like this basically experiment has to like accomplish a task we have to, like make the data and analyze the data so it's interesting I guess. yeah absolutely um i the only time i ever participated we did um a balsa wood bridge and we had to build it with the supplies they gave us. Um, and then there was a competition to see who could, I guess, design the best bridge and, and hold the most weight. So um, yeah, it was it was kind of cool, but it's been a long time. Yeah, I also did something similar to that last year. So it wasn't like, like a bridge. It was like, yeah, kind of, yeah, I did. Cool, cool. But this year it's like all virtual. So some of the stuff uh -huh. like been happening. I bet that'll be trickier, but I yeah. I think it'd be cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, have fun. Thank you. Okay. What are you doing? You can start filling on the next page. There's like columns. I realize it's huge. Okay, which ones do we use for the, um, oh, the three and one, four. They're only four for six. Oh, we think four for six.
I think that cube goes on top of this one. So for the double triangles, do I just take it from the green one and then just cut through two of them? Yeah. Okay. Are you the um, corners on that should be more? Are you using that for um, the corners? Yeah where you fold them. And I didn't read the instructions and I put two gussets there so the two aren't really connected. So right or wrong, I don't know, but it worked for mine. I think I'm kind of dumb. I put like, I don't think it matters that much, but I put it on like the wrong side of the thing. I think. Yeah. I think it's whatever. It's still gonna function the same thing. Mm -hmm.
So the point of the devices that I was going to have you make today, they're examples of class one and class two levers. So this is going to be a class two lever. Um, and then the elevator shaft is class one, just so you can show the kids how these levers work with, with uh, fluid power. So there, they will always be examples that you can use. And actually the um, elevator shaft could be one that you could build with the kids. So would you go with pre-cut material then? I would, absolutely. And the elevator shaft is a lot easier um, because you're just using craft sticks, um, but you'd wanna punch the holes ahead of time. And you can see this takes a lot of time to build. So this may not be something you wanna build with them um, unless you have a lot of time. Great. The hot glue gun worries me with some that they were yeah. done. Yeah, I agree. We host a fluid power challenge with middle school students and they can definitely handle the hot glue guns. So something to think about um, when we plan our teach back activities, we're gonna have a couple dates that you can choose from. Um, think about some of the activities that you want to, to easily do during your teach back. So it could be your syringe activity. Um, you could give examples of levers and talk about levers and um, just demonstrate which, which lever each item is like you did in the room. Um, but you'll wanna come up with a couple um, that you present during the teach back program later this month or later in March. And that will be done virtually too. Um, I think some information will come out about those dates and it'll, it'll be really simple. And a teach back, basically um, just work with your team on um, teaching it in less than five minutes during this session to another team. And then basically you'll just switch, um, switch teams. And I think you'll do it multiple times that evening, but just to kind of give you a heads up on what that will be like. But when you're thinking about teaching fluid power, and I'm going to, since you both are in there, in there I'm going to switch to uh, my almost the last slide. Um, okay. Think about three action steps um, using what you learned during the fluid power track. So you don't have to write them down right now, but um, think about what, what are you going to do based on what you learned today? And this could be investigate more levers, um, investigate more mechanical or um, simple machines. You can, I, you can look through all the activities and I will, I will email all of the activities that I have um, outside of what we're learning today. And that way you can um, kind of get familiar with them. Yeah. And also think about a location or ev an event where you plan to teach others. 
And then um, what should be the key points to your fluid power lessons? Well, obviously um, fluid power performs work. So some key points to make are what type of lever is your fluid power device? Um, how is it performing work? You can talk about the differences between hydraulics and pneumatics, um, but just to have some concise points with each lesson, because obviously if we're just saying, well, here's a lever that does something um, with a syringe and some air or some fluid, it doesn't really tell them a whole lot about the purpose. So just some things to think about, and you don't have to discuss them right now, but definitely amongst your team, just think about um, things that you'll do. Maybe the action steps could be um, just become familiar with the activities and make each one of you an expert on one of them. Need two five inch ones. Usually, five inch ones for that stuff. Are they three pencils? I'm wondering if you could almost use. So you can glue these on the outsides. Okay. Uh, it's like the paper there. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll just do. Okay. Wait, so is it going to set up like this?
for these little garden plants. Yeah, I just want to see one second if I can just show Yeah, probably feel like they're like 12, 12. Do you see a small square? How's your device looking? Uh, can you see this? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it sits flat? I mean, mostly. Yeah, mostly. <laughs> okay, perfect. Perfect. You can tell these are a little work, even just looking at those. You can see that. Um, and some of the cuts I made weren't quite straight. Yeah, so. we had a, one of the saws was that not as sharp as the other, so it was oh. a little rough on the ends.
Thank you. I don't know. Well, I'm doing this, but I'm not sure. Where are the other like five and five? Okay. So once I put this together, then we can get it. Okay, so I think I have mine built and it's really rough, so I apologize, but um, okay. basically. We're at the step where we just, uh, we just like made the, the triangle, like I don't know if these would be like brackets to put the yeah. five inch rods through. And okay, through. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm, when I cut these,
I hope that's straight. I don't think these are like perfect. But... It doesn't need to go all the way around. It just needs to be able to hold this for the Okay. This is a lot more fun when we can all be in person. It's not bad though. I think ours is kind of coming along. Good. It looked like you, you're making a lot of progress. Um, like to put things together how I think they should go. And I definitely had to take mine apart a couple times and reread the directions. And also something to know, we'll be sending information out next week about um, plans for you to get your Teens as Teachers shirts because you all get a nice Teens as Teachers polo, I believe, um, to do your programs. So just be on the lookout for that. Okay. So just some other things um, while you're working. You found there's some balloons um, and some straws in your kits and you can do an easy activity with the kids to um, lift, lift the books or lift a set of books with balloons or you can use um, Ziploc bags just to kind of show them um, how pneumatic power works. That's a really easy um, activity and I can, I'll just show my screen so you can see it. Um, and, and see how many books they can lift using trapped air. So it's a good, um, easy way to talk about pneumatics. So there's some supplies in there about that. Um, in my email to Pandora of all of these, um, or if you would like me to email the coaches directly, I can do that. Um, of the extra, extra activities that you can do, um, there's also a catapult kit that 
um, you can use the supplies in your kit to build for a class three lever if you want to build a catapult, just something extra to show the kids um, when you're teaching them. So yeah, lots of fun things out of this kit and I wish we had an entire day to build all of them. No. I think they would enjoy a catapult. Yeah, absolutely. I know I would. When you do it in person, do the kids then see he was catapult or send it furthest, send an object the furthest as their competition afterwards? Sure. Usually. However you want to. Um, the In the training we did last um, February, they made their catapults, but since uh, no one was able to do activities, I didn't get to hear. So, I could give you, or did I give you something? Yeah, you can give me four. Four, okay. So, so just do the outside. But yeah, with the catapult, you could talk about oh, okay. sports. I thought I did. Um, and, and even the heavy or how weight of the load that's on the catapult, you could talk about that and see whose goes the furthest based on the weight or the force that they exert from the catapult. So lots of fun things to do with that one. Right. I saw a uh, competition with the, is it a, called a trebuchet or something like that? Yeah. yeah. It, it's like that, but it makes it go even further. Uh-huh. Cool. Absolutely. There's a big history behind it. Trebuchets, and they're really interesting. Like um, simple walkers that they throw um, like rotting bodies over walls <laughs> during wars. Yeah, that would be a little intimidating. For sure. The shooting sports instructors made trebuchets at um, one of their trainings. And I don't remember how, what the tie in was, but they actually made them with their kids then. Mm -hmm. It was like your angle of your target, um, just to talk about that. And they also made um, paper bow and arrows or, or not paper, but like wood bow and arrows with, uh, yeah. So I just, the it was a long time ago. I guess I say a long time. I think we did the activity five years ago. So um, it's interesting how you can tie these different items to different groups. True. I think this size is thirteen sixty four. actually can you see little circles like in the inside the syringe um here let me take mine out real quick sorry i don't see any circles like they're inside the oh 
there's like circles right up here and it's right below that. It's really hard right. to say. I would say measure mine and see how far down it is. It's it though, like yeah. Okay. Uh, one centimeter. So, so like so not very far. Yeah. Ooh. That that just, it. Okay, yeah. Uh let's go over. Yeah. I mean we have a lot of <laughs> syringes. Yeah, we do. Hold on. It like went through the side and not through the middle. Oh, yeah. I think I should do it a little slower. I'm just sure doing it faster. Slow would be the right. Slower. Okay. I mean, at least it still works as a syringe you now. I'll try one more time. I thought this one's harder than the other one. Okay. It's just not going in, even though I'm pushing it. Just hard. It just like squeaks yeah. instead of going through it. I swear I was pushing as far as the other one. I don't know. Right. Okay. I mean, the whole, so that's safe. Yeah. Bringing some stuff up so you have a pull of the card in now. I guess the other one just went straight through, though. <laughs> okay, good. Okay. I'm just going to push like the card again. Whoa. Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, that's harder. Okay. You can do it if you want. Do you have one more? I'm not, We've got like six more. I'm not being right. that successful. I was pushing as hard as I could on that one. Do we just need a different bit or something? That one. Is there a trick to drilling this? It's really no, hard. You have a lot easier drill. I had to use this hand crank drill. Wow. <laughs> I'm just going to. It'd be nice if you had like a little nail to get your hole started. Okay, definitely got to starting. Okay. Yeah, it's just I don't know why the other one went straight through the first time. I'm playing a lot of force off of it too. I'm kind of tired. Okay. Yeah. Huh? I'm very hot. Go a little bit more this way. I'm going to go on that one. I'm just looking for this side. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm just gonna like. Like, see, look at how small that one yeah. is versus that one's like a. So the dowel rod will only go through the one hole. Like it, it looks like it makes holes on each side. Have you gotten all the way through it? No, not yet. We're like a quarter of the way. Oh, okay. How did you get through these with it? Okay. <laughs> Very slowly. And my drill bit has a really good point on it too. Do you have the plunger pulled all the way out? Yeah, we do. Is it pushed all the way in? Maybe try to push it all the way in and you'll have a little bit more sturdy, like it'll be sturdier. Like, I mean, I think ours is pretty sturdy. I think ours oh, okay. is pretty sturdy now. It's just like really hard to drill through. I swear metal is easier than this. Okay, yeah, just, just give us like a little bit of time. I think. Oh we'll yeah, no, it. no, no rush at all. I'm sorry if you, if you felt like I was rushing you. No, it's fine. We're making slow progress. It's totally fine. Can you flip it over? No, then you're gonna slip around again. We're almost done, I think. Yeah, like there's one like a little bit left. Yeah, you can see the light through it, so you can tell it's thinner. I think it'd be too risky. So. Yeah. Whoa! Ooh. Whoa! Oh, reverse, reverse. Oh. <laughs> I was cheering for you, but I mute. I was muted. <laughs> it's fine. Oh, my hand really hurts. Now. It does. Just like strings. I wasn't just like doing. It. I was like pushing it down too, and it took so long. I don't know. That doesn't need to go. I don't know. Oh. Should we leave it like straining like that? To be because it strands. Like. Is it supposed to like, there's a lot of resistance. That sounds good. It goes to this one. Oh. But I think it's the same size. Yeah. All right, keep building the rest of it. Where's the little thing? On it. Um, Would that be that like 
It says it should fit through the hole and it should turn in it. I mean, it'll turn, but like pretty tight. You'll like even try. I'll try to loosen that a little bit. Shall I? It'll turn in. I don't think so. I don't think it's going to matter if it's not super loose. I think you're okay. Okay. Can I put on your washers? You can put your finish. So we put this and the other thing, you know, like put it like that. Right. Like that. Right, so the three inch one goes through there. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to watch it? Yeah. Going. We should have we should have got Jaden there to help with that drill. <laughs> oh yeah. We, they had trouble drilling through the plastic and messed up a couple of them, but they finally got through. It was way harder than I expected. It took a lot of effort to build the tree. But we, we got it eventually. For whatever reason. Just wanted us to split up. Yeah. Yeah. And then when we did finally get it to go through. A lot of pushing and time, but I don't know. So, if you were going to do that activity with somebody, you might pre drill them. Yeah, yeah. Weird okay, definitely. That if some of the things uh -huh. they pick, they would definitely want, like the popsicle sticks, they'd want to pre punch on and stuff. I don't think we, I'm using like a drill, I don't think that'd be a little much. It would have helped if we had something to have the, it just move around a lot of sort of to get it started. Hole, but... Yeah. I see you trying to put the lifter on, and I want to show you how how it will work. If you can. Okay. Um, and so this is where I got. It's upside down. Huh? Yeah. Okay. I think ours is upside down. Yeah. Flip yours over. Oh yeah. Your arm is upside down. Yeah. The, like the triangles are very are about to face up. You want your lifter to still goes down with your child. Okay. Okay. There you go. Flip it around the other way because the the um you want how do I say this? The eight inch pieces sticking up, the where those um axle holders are, you'll want to hook your lifter axle holders into that one. Yes, there you go. Perfect. Yeah, yep. 
And then my other syringe is syringe is just hanging out. Um, I don't remember how many to start with. I think you said five earlier. Yeah, if you don't have, if you have five, that's okay. You think one will be enough to hold it? Yeah, for now. Yeah. And it's just a little O-ring and you can, I'll send some more when I send the tubing. Okay. So this is where you can hook up a piece of tubing to the other syringe. Oh yeah. Yeah, and so then I have the syringe out. And then when I push it in, it lifts up the lifter. What do you think? So you move this and it moves in front. Let me show that it works both ways though. Better coming to the side so she can see your Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, it popped out. So how about using this other syringe? Does it work? Does it lift it? Sorry, what? Oh, the syringe. Does it lift up and down with the syringes? Yes. yes. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. All right. You have a class two lever that you built yourself. <laughs> Great job, you guys. It does work. Well, you use your syringe. Like your yeah. Use your syringe to lift it. There you go. There you go. Perfect. Now, this is where you could experiment with different types of syringes or sizes and see um, how far it lifts and things like that. But you have a working lifter, so great job. Okay, well, since we are out of time, I just want to uh, thank you so much for joining me today. And I hope you enjoyed learning, enjoyed learning about fluid power, even though we were um, only together for a short time. But I, um, I'm gonna put this survey link back up here. We'll also send you, um, some other resources from the state office to help you with your experience as a teens teacher. Um, so just be on the lookout for that stuff um, to Pandora and to your coaches. Um, and we'll get that to you as soon as we can. So do you have any questions for me? Um, no, I think we're good for now. Yeah, that, that's great. And feel free to email me at any time. My email address is dsans.edu and I'll be happy to answer any questions um, that you have and if you need help with some more lessons I'll be happy to send resources your way so okay, okay. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. so much have a great weekend you, you too, too.